Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your sexy ranch and co-host Calderness. This episode, we're going to be going over the pump it, dump it for the new Spider-Man Beyond Amazing Threat and answering some pretty cool listener questions. This is episode 460. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like 100 instant of deadpan humor. Over oh, okay, six yeah. people think I am funny. I'm your Captain America. That was just you in a costume. You absolute fool. They're going to be able to edit that out, I'm sure. That's cool because of these I'm going to make hero clips like that forever. Are you kidding? <laughs> wow, wow, wow. I Leech for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Use code DIAL5, that's D-I-A-L-5, the number 5, for 5% off your Cool Stuff Inc. order. Joining me, like always, in the studio is Simeon Bruce. What's going on, Simeon? Ooh, I might have to make a special bumper for Pump It, Dump It. <laughs> yeah, this is Just uh, like Arnold saying, like, it's the pump. The pump. I love the pump. <laughs> and it's, then some, it's like somebody emo. saying something about dumping, I guess. Yeah. I don't I don't know. Or getting wiped or something. <laughs> no, it has to be, it has to be dumped. <laughs> no wipe. Yeah. I got wiped. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We might have audio of that. Goodness gracious. That's <laughs> what made you happy this week, my man? Oh, uh, what made me happy this week is it's t shirt weather. It got up it to seventy two for the last couple days. I'm running on like Gosh, four hours of sleep. Because uh, I don't know. Did the thunderstorm wake you up last night? Not one bit. I, Absolutely. I woke up today and I was like, oh, I guess it rained last night. That, oh, was, all, gosh. that was my only thought. So like, not only it wasn't just like normal thunder. It was a weird thunder because normal thunder is like flash of lightning. I and didn't then, see that because I would be asleep, right? Yeah. And then oh, like yeah, the, the growl. The, like, mm-hmm. the, this was either so close or it was just like so massive. I don't know what, but like the thunder rolled for literally twenty seconds in a strange way, where like it Did it woke me up cold and I on yeah. a sleepless <laughs> night. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically. But the um, storm rolled on. <laughs> storm rolled on out, out of, of control. control. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, like my so I had like some dishes in the sink and there was one thunder like hit i don't know if it woke me from my slumber or what but then the house shook and the plates rattled are you serious yeah the (laughs) plates rattled to the point where i legitimately thought like a tree branches hit had hit the house god that is a little scary the kitchen had caved in or something and i got up with my phone and started flashlighting like blah blah blah. and this was like around like 1 a.m Jeez, dude. And I normally wake up at five, so this is like four hours of sleep. It also took me quite a while just to fall asleep for whatever reason. Yeah, I don't know why, but it took me quite a while just to fall asleep. And then once I had fallen asleep, this is like my first wake up. And oddly enough, my dog just sound asleep, just like really comfy as he can be. I don't believe that. And I was just like, that's "Are not you?" In, that's not in character. So there's a thing called exploding head syndrome, and I've experienced it multiple times ah. when you're about to fall asleep. Similar to like when you're about to fall asleep, and then and all of a sudden explodes. you're like, "Oh, I'm falling." <laughs> And like, oh, you yeah, like yeah, kick yeah, your yeah, legs. Okay, yeah, yeah, I know. What so you mean. similar to that, except you don't <sighs> feel like you're falling. That's you just terrifying. Hear a loud That's noise. That's a scary feeling too. An insanely loud noise, and you're just like, "Wow, that was insanely loud!" And you jerk awake. Yeah. When you're about to fall asleep, that's a thing that I've experienced multiple times. Normally, I just when it wakes me up, I'm just like. Oh, okay, yeah, that's what that was. What does this have to do with you being happy this week? Or did we, oh, okay. <laughs> I think we just like completely, totally, s- yeah. So it's always weather I really, related. I, it's really either just food like or only weather four related. Hours of sleep last yeah. night. Yeah, that's his favorite thing. In the uh, world. No, like the weather has been nice. It is. So like today was just it was a beautiful day. It was warm. Uh, it was definitely t-shirt weather. The wind wasn't crazy. This weekend was great weather as it was. well. It was really good. So, yeah, just great weather around. But then, like, yeah, this thunderstorm was just wild. It was. I have no excuse. Like, after it woke me up the first time, it didn't keep me awake. I just kept myself awake. I ended up, like, looking up, like, this Omaha uh, fencing whatever, like, thing on Facebook. I I didn't look it up. I'm friends with a guy that's in it. And it was like, oh, this guy commented on this thing. And there's 500 people in this group that they're just like Omaha fencers, like but the they're sword like stuff. They're like big into like the uh, Renaissance ah, aspect of it, so okay. it's like very 
So they're losers. <laughs> so they're, that, they're very... They're a bunch of nerds. They use actual swords, though. Oh, like, that's actually kind of cool. So, yeah, the, I take not, back everything it's I just not said LARPing. in the last 10 seconds. Yeah, it, it's LARPing, but it's not LARPing because they use actual like weapons and like metal helmets and stuff. Oh, yeah. That's kind of cool. This one guy was like, if you don't know the rules of the Iron Ring, then here are the rules. And it's like, to acquire the Iron Ring, you must make a challenge. You can only make one challenge per day, but like the the occupier the the holder of the iron ring can accept as many challenges per day as they want okay challengers can only challenge like once like all this stuff and i was just like wow crazy blah blah blah. Simeon and then i scroll down and this guy's like the iron ring yeah <laughs> <laughs> sadly these guys like actually have talent oh, and like damn. i have never once used a sword in any kind of uh, i mean okay. in, I, i've watched movies that's that's Ooh. my extent of my sword knowledge but no like i i scroll down and like i see this guy that's like oh I see you guys are still using the Iron Ring. That's funny because when I introduced it to the group years ago, that it was, was met with quite a bit of like chagrin. And then some guy was like, I don't remember it being met with much chagrin. Maybe it was because you disparaged the two-handed uh, barbarians, as you called them. So I read like no. five pages of nerdy sword fighter <laughs> oh. messages back and forth on Facebook in a group that I'm not even in. It's just public. Why would they have this group be public? Oh, I don't no. know. There's a lot of people in this group. The The great thing about it is because they, they call it different kingdom. This is the kingdom of like Sindar or something. And it's like the a steel. 402 It's a steel kingdom. kingdom. <laughs> 402 represent corn cob country. <laughs> Sindar. Um, and so I read like all these messages back and forth. <laughs> And then I was like, wait, there's like other kingdoms? And there's literally, for every state, every like different area, multiple bigger states with bigger populations have multiples. They have the same weird little dramas going oh, on in between them where it's oh like, oh my gosh. Uh, actually, a single handed sword takes a lot more skill than a two handed sword. <laughs> Pretty much any bruiser or barbarian could use a two handed oh sword in battle. So that's why they're not allowed in our kingdom. And it's just like hilarious. And like, I. I don't know why, but I just crave that stuff. So I read so much of that last night, and then like I caught myself at like three a.m. and I was like, oh, "You have to go. So to, you have to try to sleep. You have to try to sleep. You have to work tomorrow." And so I did. I like I laid back down, and like all I could think was like, "I'll never be able to get the Iron Ring. I don't even. <laughs> I don't even know the basics of fencing. I don't even have a suit. This one dude has like a three hundred dollar helmet." <laughs> Yeah. Like I could, I'll three D print myself oh. like a samurai mask, but then oh, they'll be like, that "Oh, that's, that's not, not period good. accurate." That's not good. I don't know. The other guy, like, he just bought like a really good fencing sword, but then they were like, "Oh, you have to have different tips installed." And I was like, "So is the sword like a solid object, and then the tips are swappable because that's what they make it sound like?" And so, like, that was the interior you conversation I had deep, in my brain deep rabbit hole as I was trying to fall asleep and then like in the background my dog's snoring and the thunder's rolling <sighs> that's what made me happy I love this though <laughs> Simeon I uh, love like this. truly brand new Patreon tier get Simeon fully equipped so he can take the <laughs> iron ring weird yes, weird please. like drama in like fringe nerd groups just makes me so that. entirely happy and that includes like Heroclix. Heroclix has that. its own little and drama I also groups. Love but that you <laughs> like this so was like a, this was a whole new level. Like this was something I'd never. I've I've gone into like the magic, the Pokemon, abs absolutely the like Heroclix drama groups. I've like looked in like the videos and stuff. This was like pure unadulterated. Like oh, looking back at that post, I see you were the biggest outlier that didn't want the iron ring to be here and kingdom of citadel or whatever they call like the omaha land what? and he was like uh, actually no <laughs> like just going back and forth it was so so good and uh what's crazy is like the the guy that like i like brought me to this post because i'm friends with him actually does play hero clicks I don't think he's like as active enough that he would listen to the podcast, but I have reached out to him a few times, and I, I, yeah, he does still play Hero Click, okay. so it's possible that at some point he'll hear this and he'll know exactly what I'm talking about. But uh, yeah, the, and he's not the first person I've met playing Hero Clicks that also does like these highly intensive. Sword I don't even want to call it LARPing fight. because it's 
Oh, it's it's that larping on like another was level. For sure, though, that it's, was some larping oh, going yeah, on yeah, in the yeah, comments. Yeah. It was but like, yes, hitting each you, other with like sir. real steel and yeah. stuff. That's yeah. not LARPing. Yeah, not they've, they've got that MMA steel, like real steel fighting or whatever. Yeah. Where like they actually, like the one dude's like, oh, I'm going to use a battle axe. And it's like a sledgehammer with like an, a point on it. And, and he just like break bashes some dude. Jeez, dude. Yeah. Like those are crazy. I'm like, they, sure, they're wearing like actual plate armor. But at the same time, like. People died in plate armor. Yeah, about to say, <laughs> like, like <laughs> crazy a, thing about war. There's a reason why they stopped using plate armor at a certain point. Uh, how, many, and, how many people LARP as archers with real boner? <laughs> oh man, <laughs> you know, that was, so I'm gonna shoot you uh, with this. Last week there was four challengers for the Iron Ring. Zero of those challengers won. So oh. the Iron Ring remains in like uh, Wolfston. Howell Stead's the Braves hand, yeah, freaking, whatever his okay, name was. Yeah, uh, it remains in his hands. Two of the challengers were women, and I assume they were using tactics other than sword. But it, it did specifically said that one-handed swords were like required for combat. But I'm like, I mm, at least have one-handed sword. Can you not like just? Can I not at one point during the combat grab the sword? With yeah, both my hands? even if it's like a rapier, like could I not double hand a rapier and just like swing rapier it extra hand hard? It's pretty small though, isn't it? It is. Can you, can you t- even is it even uh, long enough I mean, two hands? If you got like an extra large one, <laughs> like one made <laughs> one made for somebody twice the size. Yes, my potions are too strong for you, stranger. Oh um, gosh, don't do that. All no, right, well, I, so, I mean, you've been talking about this for about ten minutes yeah, now. Uh, LARP with a baseball bat. That's all I'm saying. Ooh, yeah. There we go. I, that's what I love. Uh, I'll stop after this. But okay. One thing I love about like historical people that talk about like swords and stuff there's like a couple youtube channels where they talk about sword fighting and there's this one where the guy like constantly says he's like a baseball bat beats a sword in like a like 1v1 fight 10 out of 10 times because a baseball bat is meant for like swinging Swinging, and breaking yeah and a sword is meant for swinging and striking so if a baseball bat meets a sword it It will break the sword break the sword yeah i mean more likely probably and then also like if like somebody's wearing like plate mail or whatever, and they get hit with a bat, it's gonna like concuss them. It's gonna knock the wind out of them. Whereas a sword will just like swing off of like the plate mail or whatever. Okay, sure. And right. I was like, glance. as soon as I heard that, I was like, glad I never learned how to swing swords because like yeah. I'm super good with bats. I know how to swing a baseball. I'm, I'm super good with bats. Baseball. So like, yeah, because I'm an American. Yeah, bring bring it on, sword guys, because I I got like two bats in my car. So play like, little league. I know yeah. what's up. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> The batter versus Knight Gilead the Wise. <laughs> hey, it's yo. just you in a Cubs outfit or something. <laughs> ten, ten hours later, what made you happy? Hey, yo, I came for the iron ring. You you pack your lip full of dip. <laughs> <laughs> you point to the to the outfield. And you, yeah, big oh, big uh, iron veil chew. I don't yeah, know. Oh, there you whatever, go. whatever the Omaha area is called. I can't uh, remember. No, what made me happy this week? It was Easter. My family went. We hung out. We went all the way to Ames, Iowa. Going to Iowa never makes me happy, so that's not necessarily part of it, but it's what we did there. Yeah. Uh, so I out with our family. We decided what we wanted to do for like fun. My family loves doing escape rooms. Uh, and this one, we put a little more, uh, like, I don't know, added, what would, what would you call it, stakes to it. So oh, okay. our escape room's at 2 o'clock. You're like, we're going to leave one of you behind. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to kill my little brother if we don't escape. Whoever doesn't add the most to, like, to the, the, the escapism. Um, no. So also on the same day, we were arguing about what movie did we go see after the escape room. Because it was like, escape room, go see a movie or eat supper or a supper and then a movie and we were trying to figure out whether we wanted to watch D or the mario movie okay and so then my mother the beautiful charm she is she said why not both so we figured out that we could yeah we could easily make it work to watch both movies however in order to have enough time to eat supper between the movies we'd have to watch mario at three fifteen. with the mm. escape room starting at two we had an hour to escape and the movie theater being pretty far away about, yeah 15 minutes it, it means we need to escape the room on time or no popcorn time. no previews it, yeah yeah yep okay. so we so now there's this extra stakes to escape this escape room either very early or at the very least on time be like okay i don't need your nerd explanation escape room guy we didn't get out whatever we'll leave you know so the escape room was board game themed which really quick to the listener 
was not reflective in how the room actually looked, which is really disappointing. Uh. There was like no cool board game posters. They had like shoots and ladders on a table, and uh. I was like, "Are oh, this is like what normal people think board game people yeah. are like." Like when you say like I like board games, and they're like, "Ah, oh, I hate Monopoly," and you're just like, "What?" Uh. It's like, bro, I haven't played Monopoly in five, ten yeah, years. Yeah, like I've played a hundred board games since the last time I've played Monopoly. Exactly. Like, okay. so, but this escape room was really cool. It was really rough because the way they talked about the character that locks you in the room was very akin to how I used to be when we played board games as a family. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So basically, Calderness is locking you in this room, right? It was like he invites you like into his house to play board games. Maybe he talks a little <laughs> too long about how the board game works, and he over-explains it a little bit. But then you start to like beat him, and he just doesn't understand how you're beating him at the game that he clearly knows more about you. <laughs> and so he starts like you know ripping cards, throwing things around, and I was yeah. like, oh no, it's teenage me. Uh, <laughs> And then he says, yeah, he locks you in the apartment. He leaves and he, like, drives off in his Ford Escape. And I was like, no, no, no. Uh, and it's like, that's my <laughs> that's my car. I drive a Ford. No. Um, I said Ford Focus. But still, they were like, a Ford, huh? <laughs> yeah. I was. Everybody was looking at me. And the guy was even was like, oh, do you, do you have something in common with Albert? I'm like, I have nothing in common with Albert. Please continue with your spiel, sir. Uh, so we get in the room. The goal of the room is to find ever is to figure out whose favorite Monopoly piece is whose, find all the Monopoly pieces, and then hit the Monopoly pieces have like a special little QR code thing or some weird thing that would trigger scan wise uh, okay. on the bottom. And you would scan the Monopoly piece and you had to scan them all in order in order to get the key in order to unlock <clears> yourself <throat> and get out of the room. I hate light based like so like some escape rooms have light based puzzles where you have to yeah. like redirect it or you have to like put things in like certain slots so that like the light will reflect a certain way through them. Yeah. Those are my big hatreds. Those are annoying. This isn't too bad. This is literally but, just like place it on top. It'll trigger or it won't. And, like, trigger. As long as you got it right. Okay. Yeah. And if you got it wrong, you had to wait three minutes before you could try again, oh. which is killer. And we were like, guys, we can't, if we uh, get this wrong, no popcorn. Yeah, exa exactly. Like, That's what I'm saying. The guys. stakes like, we were have high. to, we have to do this. But we actually crushed this escape room. We nice. beat it in 28 minutes. Whoa! Yeah, it was our fastest time yet. And I think it was because of the added stress. Yeah. We were all just super, like, going hard. Channeling the Chris everything. Pratt. Yeah. Channeling the Jack Black. Just like, yeah. we, have we have to get to, to this to movie Mario on movie. time. Yeah, we absolutely crushed it. Like, we solved, like, all their puzzles. We kind of came to a point where we were like, I'm not totally sure what to do. So we asked for a hint, and the guy was like, honestly, it's not really a hint to give you guys. Maybe just quit messing around with the computers. <laughs> so, like, it was, like, a non-hint. He was, like, kind of wasting time on this. But you guys are honestly, like, really killing it. <laughs> and this was their hardest room, too. Like, they said this was their oh, hardest okay. room. And we just absolutely annihilated it. It was oh, it was man. so awesome. I, lo I, really, I really loved it. There was this one hat uh, that they made my family made me wear so historically when we're playing an escape room and i will also try to wrap this up soon because we are almost 20 minutes into the show uh i would just sometimes when i didn't care to do the escape room and got like lazy i would just put on whatever clothes were in the escape room because sometimes they have that so when i'm yeah. in a wild west escape room so i put on like the hat the cool vest like the guns and the holsters and stuff in this one there was a hat from zoetis or whatever this company is called which i think is some type of like genetic something company or whatever hmm. uh but anyways on the hat it had bad genetics written on it in <laughs> sharpie and they made me wear it which only hurt my pride slightly we have the same <laughs> genetics but whatever um, yeah so yeah you're my family you're my if you laugh at this you're laughing at yourself exactly so yeah so escape room was fun we killed it it was great set like a brand new record we absolutely annihilated this dude's escape room then oh, we saw man. the mario movie and i really enjoyed the mario movie we saw the D, &D movie and i kind of enjoyed the D, &D movie and i thought it was fun. i think the D, &D movie was just so slow which, was really which chris did it better oh, pratt or uh the other one chris pine is just without chris pine that D, &D movie i would not want to watch I imagine, like yeah, up. I imagine he, so he, he as, need that as playing relief. a bard, yeah, yeah, so like, which, by the way, doesn't do a single bardly thing in the yeah. entire, spoiler for the D&D &D movie, uh, he never once does like, what would you call it, when you, when you sing a little song, bardic enchantment, he never does anything um, like that, he, he doesn't do a bard spell, yeah. bardic, yeah, bardic yeah. inspiration. There's only one time he plays the lute, and it's not even like him playing it. It's like a astral projection of him, and I was like, that sure. could have been him yeah. doing performance could have just, or distraction. Yeah, had him do that. Yeah. yeah. Instead, he's a planner. <clears throat> I make That's plans. That's my biggest like worry about that movie is that it'll give a lot of D and D players like some sort of absurd amount of 
like new D and D players, some mm. sort of like absurd amount of like idealism for bards. And I do love playing a bard, but you have to know that like your bard is not attacking, your bard is not doing any damage. Like no. you're not a damage per second character, you're not a tank, you're not a healer. Your turns you are, in combat look so lame. Yeah, you are just literally so you know. <laughs> just there for like the non combat portions yep. of the D and D. Like even in combat, like you can do bardic inspiration and like some other stuff, but like. Even in combat, most of the time you are the the weak link of the party, yeah. and so if your like campaign is a heavy combat campaign, you are going to suffer. It's gonna really suck. It's for you, like man. the worst part of it is all of those like encounters. The best part is like all the times you're trying to like you know do something. The yeah, talking, like sneak past the, to, like a guard yeah. or like sweet talk like you know the the barmaid to like give you more information. That kind of stuff yeah. is like that's fun. That's like great role playing. But I I have a feeling that there's going to be like a lot of like D&D groups that like start up and oh, like they all want to be like the Chris Pine. Well, I I would hope because every character is still really <laughs> strong in it. They just aren't uh they just don't relieve the tension as well as like Chris Pine obviously does. Like yeah. Holga is like this really barbarian lady who's just like she's just mean and non-personal and whatever. So like she's an interesting character. But that's not really interesting to follow, you know? She needs yeah. to work off of somebody else. I think all the characters in the par- quote-unquote party are interesting enough where you could be like, oh, I do want to be a paladin. Oh, I do want to be like a wild shape druid or something, you know? I think it sells that. I actually think the movie, it's the perfect movie to base off D&D because it's literally just like a D&D campaign. Oh, we're doing this random dumb side quest to get this thing, to get that thing, to then finally yeah. defeat the, the villain at the end. And it's perfect. And we introduce characters and names that you're going to forget halfway through the campaign because you don't care anymore. Um, they do combat really well. They do spells really well. The only bad thing they don't do really well is make it a movie very well. Uh, because a D&D campaign doesn't make a for a good no, movie. The it pacing really, it just isn't there. It makes for an okay um, um, series it, oh great yeah very good series uh, I obviously say. critical role has done well yeah and then um the they again? vox machina whatever they made yeah that like animated series that they made pretty it, like, I, I don't know if you're into like if you're into D I don't know if you'll enjoy it if you're somewhat like aware of D D, yeah. you'll probably enjoy it like if, you, if you've never played D, but you're aware of like how it works You'll probably enjoy it more than like if you've actually played the Vox D&D. thing or the indie movie. The the Vox oh, the Vox, Vox thing. Machina okay. Uh, okay. animated like yeah, they yeah, two yeah. seasons out. Yeah, whatever, yeah. I think uh, I would say the opposite is true for the D and D movie. If you really like Dungeons and Dragons and you can check out all the references and everything they're doing accurately, like how they portray a zero charisma and all that stuff. Oh, it's yeah. really awesome. Okay. It's really really awesome. If you don't know Dungeons and Dragons <laughs> like at all, it's like an okay fantasy adventure movie. Sure. Yeah, that- and that's basically yeah. That makes sense. But it was en- it was enjoyable. It was just there was so much backstory for everything and flashbacks and whatever. And I'm like, okay, this happens in a D&D campaign. I don't need this so much in, <laughs> yeah. the, in the movie. It's very it feels it's a very lot slow. of yeah, campaigns like I mean, it's a lot of exposition. A lot of exposition because man. like you so you never much. know when the campaign's going to like end or continue or whatever. So like that's like just the yeah. majority of the campaign. Yep. I've thought about trying to force you and Ian into a campaign. But it would be one where, um, so there's the, there's a D and D adjacent. It's not like it's using the D and D same kind of stuff. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, it's, it's using like a three point five or a fifth edition like engine, um, but it's not like the same world. And essentially, like champions are chosen. Like every generation, champions are born, and they have like the knowledge and like power of champions throughout time. Okay. So like you're you're stuck in like the D and D times like you know whatever that might be like the dark ages yeah, whatever it, it doesn't matter kinda, yeah it yeah. doesn't matter but it's like it's not modern times uh, so like let's say like I make you play as like a monk and like you're like one of these champions that chosen and like you're like ooh suddenly I want to snap into a slim gym and heal up oh yeah because that monk Was... is channeling the champion. <laughs> That is Macho Man Randy that Savage. Kinda, that would be kind of awesome. Yeah, like I'd so, like so, like you can that. like in this like uh in this okay. world you can literally just pick anything. So like you That's could sick. You could be a uh, I, I, what do they call them? The like you could be a bard that uh, ends up being like like Lady Gaga or 
uh, oh, like Freddie okay. Mercury or okay. something like that, like where like you just use their catchphrases and stuff. But like, so it makes the role playing a lot easier because you're literally oh, just role playing an actual character, but in this world that like no one around you understands these references. So yeah, when you say like, really cool. ah, like I'm the cream of the crop, they're like, okay, okay. like. I mean, like, crops don't really provide cream, but I don't, yeah. like, okay, that's cool. And then you, like, say yeah. snap into a Slim Jim, and they're like, never heard those words put together in that kind of I way. Guess James over there is pretty skinny. I don't really want to snap <laughs> yeah. it, though. <laughs> yeah, old, uh, old Jimmy is uh, not <laughs> yeah, not going to take a, a liking to being snapped being into snapped like into. that. <laughs> um, no, I like that, because, like, honestly, the last two or three one shots or campaigns that I've been in, I've just made my character a reference to somebody else. Like one was like I was just Rocky Balboa, and then another one I was just Wesley from uh, what's it called, Princess Bride. Yeah, which is like really fun. There's there's actual like mechanics where you can just make that a thing. That that's is awesome. Actual like you in universe correct like it it's actually like supposed to happen yeah and like people around you like don't quite understand it you have to have like a very good um like quote unquote dungeon master like a whatever game master whatever you want to call them you have to have somebody that like can roll with variety quite well yeah but it does come off just like some of the best role playing because that's like some of the hardest part some of the hardest parts of that of getting into D and D and stuff is correctly role playing. If you put yourself down as a lawful good person, and then you decide that like you just killed this like bandit and you're gonna search his pockets, eh, like that's nope. wrong. Yep. Nope. Lawful good people don't search the pockets of dead people. Surprise. Uh, now you're like God no longer has favor for you. Yeah. So like, I'm a there's scumbag, bro. <laughs> yeah, like. Ah, like so, like good thing you're a paladin. You no longer have favor with your deity, and uh, you're gonna lose all your bonuses. Yeah, have fun smiting with what idiot? Yeah, because, yeah. Because you search the pockets of a dead bandit. Um, it's not Skyrim, so yeah, yeah. yeah that's anyway. So hero clicks. <laughs> yeah, we're we're a little ways in hero clicks podcast. Hey, let's do a thread dead redemption on the Spider Man pump it and dump it thread. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is. Hero clicks now. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like, hundred instant dead and human. Over oh, yeah. six oh, people yeah. think I am funny. I'm your Captain America. That was just you with a costume. You absolute fools. Then you'll be able to edit that out. That's cool because that's, I'm gonna make hero clicks like that forever. Are you kidding? <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Ooh, yeah. Pump it and dump it. Timo Supremo. Uh, so we are pumping and dumping Spider-Man Beyond Amazing. Beyond Amazing. Is, do you have your pumps and dumps? I will make them up when we get there. Okay. Yeah, so I don't necessarily. We'll start with Timo Supremo, yeah. and then we'll Let just kind of call out people that... Um, have some Garbo opinions yeah. and or good opinions. That's how <laughs> Ones that just kinda dead typically stick kinda out. goes. So we're starting with Timo Supremo. Uh, we're not going to go over the rules of the pump and dump thread. You pick three figures that you want to dump and three figures that you would replace in the set instead. So you're dumping three figures from the set and putting three people into the set. That's the whole point. Um, but we're not going to go over all the rules because there's no reason to. So Timo Supremo, he knocked it off. So we're going to start with his. He's dumping the generic hand ninja common, the generic hand ninja uncommon and the common police officer generic dumping three generics from a set the this only is like, <laughs> generics i think from this set. well so the symbiote, only generic he I guess. didn't dump was yeah. symbiote but so he's dumping hand ninja hand ninja and police officer and the only thing i will say if you are dumping these then you have to account for the fact that now wilson fisk doesn't make police officer yep. um Punisher and Matt Murdock and don't make Daredevil hand ninjas. Or female Daredevil don't get to do it. Yeah, like, that like sucks. Yeah, the Electra Nachios um, Daredevil does not like give them exploit. Doesn't like affect them at all. They're just not in the set. So you have to keep that in mind when you dump things from a set. Uh, instead, he is pumping Chance McCall. I'm assuming uh, Slug and Necra. I actually just got a like a comic with Chance in it for the first time. Chance ever. is a that's a super, symbiote, right? 
No. No? He's like a Paste Pot Pete-esque dude. Oh, okay. Just dumb technology stuff. Oh. Guns or something. He's just really weird. He looks, okay. He looks goofy as hell. So, yeah. Pumping, Chance, Slug, and Necra. I'm assuming these are characters that like are Spider-Man adjacent. Makes sense for like a Spider-Man set. But again, if you're dumping three generics, just keep in mind how you affect the set as a whole if you do so. Because... Like, now you have several characters that just don't work. So you might as well have, like, dumped the Matt Murdock, Punisher, and Elektra, or Matt Murdock, Punisher, and Wilson Fisk. Instead, kept the generics, because the generics work on their own, but they those figures don't work if they don't generate these guys. Um, that's, like, the first, like, most egregious one. But, like, there's several people that really want to dump those generics. That's wild to me. I get that they don't really have anything to do with Spider-Man himself, necessarily. Dang, still. Yeah. We also get a couple people that really, really hate the Carnage chases. Don't like the Carnage ones. Yeah. Really, of all the chase themes in the set, oh, the yeah. Carnage ones are the of ones like you the, don't like? Of the two chase themes. And what's crazy about, so Pump and Dump Thread, I guess another rule that I should mention, is it's three and three. So you get a dump yeah. three, you get a pick three. So picking a chase theme is usually like in my opinion just like kind of a bad idea like if i if i was using this to actually pretend like i was able to change how a set was developed yeah i would never pick a chase theme because if i'm picking like oh like i wouldn't have done as many super friends it's like all right they did six super friends and soup six super villains so like you know you dump six super you or you dump three like of the, the six super friends now there's only three super friends and like what you like pumped three more super villains like so that's three and nine like what are you doing with these chase yeah. themes now so like the carnage and gwen chase themes were split evenly uh the dark stone however says love the cur and super rares really don't care about the chases so dump carnage iron man carnage captain america carnage rocket said i'm kind of tired of symbioted characters of the lot the only one i would want is carnage surfer because that actually happened so while i don't disagree with being tired of like symbioted characters i will say like picked some of like the weirder ones like i i will agree carnage iron man and rocket like kind of weak carnage captain america is probably like one of like the cooler more unique ones i would say so on a Obviously, Carnage Surfer is one of the more unique ones. Yeah. But, like, you know who could have easily been dumped? It was Carnage Clea. Like, somebody that, Yeah, like, why not her of all of them? She literally does the same thing as Rocket. She's just a Carnage that has prob, and she doesn't do anything, like, super special. She does something with, like, her own mystics and characters not that do stuff with their own helpful mystics. helpful to other Carnage people. No. Yeah. It's almost completely negligible if she had given mystics to all characters with like the symbiote keyword or something maybe she would have had something cool going on but but yeah the fact that like it was just iron man and i he didn't even go in order it was 58 59 and then skipped 60 went to 61 so yeah strange uh pumping kangaroo screwball and spider side so kangaroo actually gets pumped quite a bit in this thread who is Kangaroo? I know, right? Yeah. Who is Kangaroo, Screwball, or Spider Side? But especially is Kangaroo because they definitely get pumped multiple times. Uh, speaking of pumped multiple times, Agony, Lasher, Phage are just three other uh, symbiote characters. And they get pumped, you know, one, two, six, eight. I don't know how many times they get pumped in this thread, but like. Judas Traveler also gets pumped quite a bit in this thread. Ben Riley, actually know who that is. I do. Hey, Ben, I know that one. <laughs> yeah, Ben Riley actually makes sense to me why yeah. he would be pumped in this thread. But then again, Ben Riley being pumped next to Kangaroo. I love lame villains, and yet we have yet to get him. But if Kangaroo was in this set, someone would have said, I hate lame villains. <laughs> yeah. Why are we wasting it on a Kangaroo? Oh, we already got Kangaroo and Frogman as, as legacy cards. Why are we getting a Kangaroo? Why, Why are you so wasting many the slot on kangaroo? Characters? This sucks. Yeah, people with big legs, I hate wow. it. Wow, this is the coldest take ever. Dump Iron Spider Prime, common Matt Murdock Gwen Stacy. But seriously, Iron Spider Prime, dump him? And then yeah. he's like, pump, chance, again, why? Slug, and slide? 
So sure. multiple people actually dump Iron Spider Prime Why? on the specific because he was made last because of the set? last Spider Man set that same Iron Spider was made. So like the mm-hmm. um. The I Prowler, hmm. what, what's his name? Miles Morales is Aaron uh, Davis. Aaron uncle. Davis, yeah. So it goes from Prowler to Iron Spider. Yeah. Which I would dump his. We'll get into my dumps later, but still, I don't get people that. Yeah. I, so, like, the thing is, like, this Iron Spider Prime is at so least, good. At least he's better. Yeah. That's the, should be the takeaway. Yeah. At least you made him better. Like, you should only ever dump a figure they remake and then they're worse. I wouldn't dump this character because he's so much better than, like, the previous yeah. version. Yeah. On that, like, offset alone, like, regardless of, like, what his real name is and, like, the fact that we just made him three years ago, mind you, uh, so just, he was just made, like, yes, the last time a Spider-Man set was three years ago, so... That's kind of wild. Yeah. Keep it that way, though. <laughs> I Don't... mean, we do get spider get him enough people in enough. every other set, yeah. All right, we got another dump Matt Murdock, dump police officer and then carnage or venom controlled pieces just carnage or venom yes yeah get rid of the rest i, I can't blame him there. so at least this dump says them all as like a whole yeah because if you're gonna say dump one you might as well say dump all so this would include like obviously like venom thanos uh and the chase theme with carnages and then it would leave like the super rare carnage and then the what common or uncommon venom that heals yeah, from super sense rolls. Yeah. But in the same stance, Pump, Kindred, Chance, Slide, Lady Craven. You have to read what he says after each one. Yeah, so Kindred, he was the controlling leader of the villains in the Sinister War storyline. Where is he? I don't know. Is he a symbiote? Because if he is, I don't care. Chance, villain from Sinister War storyline that's never been made. Well, I don't know. Slide. <laughs> or not that's that's not slide. That's sealed. 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 Yeah, I didn't notice that. Yeah, it's the Y is before the L. Villain from Sinister War storyline that's never been made. Lady Craven. Lady Craven. You're not going to believe this. <laughs> Listener, you might not believe what Lady Craven is. <laughs> Villain from the Sinister War storyline that's never been made. <laughs> Great hot takes. Uh, beautiful. I would definitely pump those characters just on the fact that they were in a storyline and they've never been made. Of course. You know, obviously there's billions of characters that have been in storylines and never been... Uh, I won't say billions. Oh, man. There's probably hundreds... Hundreds of thousands of characters that have been in a storyline that have never been made in HeroClix. And I hope they never are because, man, sometimes you just have throwaway characters. Yup. Like, I will say, if they, like, made every character that appeared in the background, like, the, the slavers that were, like, you know, controlling, like, people... And it's just like, oh, this one, this one's bug-eyed slaver. Oh, yikes. This one's two-faced slaver. This one's large forehead slaver. Like, great. I love X-Men comics because there's so many people that are thrown away. Um, Is there anything more interesting? We don't need to read WWE Wave 2, guys. Oh, comment. Ooh, this guy's dumping Slade. Slade Wilson definitely... Definitely has hot takes. Yeah, he so does. He's, been he's got a pump a and a dump, time, and man. then he's got a legacy dump. And I do not like his legacy dump, but I mean, his legacy pump is okay. I think some of the legacy dumps he has could have used reworks to be a little more pump worthy than dump worthy. Yeah, you know what I mean. At least one of them, Frogman, is goaded though. Don't need to dump Frogman. Jeez, no, Frogman. Hater. Frogman got remade fine in the perfect time, like for a perfect era. For yeah, Frogman to be remade. Terrain changed, knockback came back, yeah. Frogman came back, perfect. Absolutely great time for Frogman to return. Rookie Spider-Man, sure. Don't really, like, I've never had that figure, never probably ever will have that figure. Don't care about it. I looked yeah. at the Legacy card and I was just like, he's got like a weird little backpack, that's crazy. Stilt Man dump? Slade Wilson, stilt man dump, really? He is a little worse than his old he counterpart, is. you know? He's it's still a bummer. silver legal. That's true. So he came out in Superior Foes. So he, just on the edge of the Spider-Verse, comes in yeah. Silver Legal. But I will never say that like a stilt man getting a, a remake or like no. a second chance is bad. Uh, he does like work only with like Rally Dice now, which is just like super rough. Um, that, that is the bummer part. But like I, I would never dump the Frogman stilt man. No. Bringing those both back to modern is awesome. And then pumping instead, I do actually agree. I think all of these pumps are great options for the legacy. 
the handstand Spidey from Superior Foes. Okay. Obviously, I think if you're going to legacy something, something that like people definitely know. That's iconic. When he you was say the Spider-Man for yeah, a long time. When you say handstand Spidey, anyone that was playing at that time or played through that time knows exactly what you're talking about, even if they haven't played that figure for like 6 years now. Um Deadpool Superior Foes of Spider-Man the Ghost Peter, so That was so good. With the the Superior Foes like Spider-Bots. Yeah. That one was cool. Great sculpt. It's like so it's um, Spider Man standing on like a chimney or something, the and then building. the ghost of Peter Parker, like the conscience of yeah. Peter Parker, standing next to him because it's Otto Octavius Peter Parker. Um, and then yeah, that one could spit out the the spider bots. The spider yeah, bots yeah. so cool. That one was like just. I don't know if it was competitive, but I know it was. It wasn't. It never was. It was but just man. Like, it was cool. Really fun, and yeah. it was also an awesome sculpt. Both of those super rares. And then the web of Spider-Man Doc Ock, also just an awesome sculpt. And I'll yes. I'll also pump that one because I own that one. So, yeah, I actually own all three of those. I that was Spider-Man uh, Superior Foes of Spider-Man was the first set I bought into when I came back into clicks. Was it nice? I, yeah, I it was like two sets old. So I bought can't remember where I bought it from, but I bought it from some online retailer for like. 75 bucks a brick and i got two bricks and i pulled pretty well didn't know anything about like the i took my hiatus before the announcement of the sketch variants so pulling sketch variants without knowing what they were what was pretty the crazy. hell yeah it's just like <laughs> ah some of these aren't colored wild um why they look like that <laughs> let's see good do we want want this this packed list of pumps I, man i like that a lot though, from too. old glenn quackmeyer <laughs> <laughs> so he's dumping beetle bombastic Bagman, and dr strange sure i can see it there get rid of them and then he wants this wildly packed list of pumps aka wild pack pumps battle star man eater and then a wild pack mercenary generic i like the idea of adding a generic that's cool and of course, I love getting any Battlestar representation on there. I love Battlestar, dude. So whoever Maneater is, yeah, throw them in there too. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't know Maneater. I don't think Beetle deserves to be a Master of Evil sub theme for Avenger 60th. No, I think Beetle should not be. I think instead of dumping Beetle, you could dump Sandman if you're gonna say like sub them in for Avenger 60th. Yeah, Sandman he would be in Avengers 60th yeah. way more than Beetle. Beetle just is not on the same level of like no. Avengers. Beetle is specifically like a team up against Spider-Man kind of person. 100%. He is, he is not like a I can take on the Hulk kind of person where like Hydro Man, Sandman, and mm, kind of like Rhino. Yeah. And like it's weird. Take on like Avenger people. Frankie, Frank E. Ottweiler here has some weird dumps in the fact that he hates like the Aguengers. Yeah. But then he chose like some of the best ones, which is strange. Uh, yeah, very odd. Again, like it dumping like half of a chase theme means like, I mean, you can dishonorably mention them as all you want, but if you're dumping three and pumping three, then like you are expecting the set to come out with the three that you placed in. Yeah. And whatever is left like, of that chase theme. So like this, this chase, chase theme, theme is just. Now, like, three Gwens that don't really make sense. So, dumping the Inguinable Hulk, the Iron Gwen, and the Captain Gwen America, which would just leave Hawk Gwen, uh, God Gwen of Thunder. 2099, and, yeah, like, the Gwoden, yeah. Gwoden son, or Gwoden <sighs> daughter, whatever, um, and Gwenable, uh, Gwad of Gwunder. Yikes. Um, so, yeah, those three. <laughs> And then the pumps were silver Spidey armor, Spidey. That would be cool. Which, that is super old, though. Yeah. Right? Like, his original anti-shocker armor or yeah, electro armor. That yeah. wasn't even like a... That's ancient, That's dude. like worse than like Spidey armor. Like, Iron Spider is like yeah. better than that silver armor. Um, it was just like a... Just the final anti electro, right? Anti-shock like the shocker armor. Shocker electro yeah. armor, yeah. Like an absorption armor. Spider Ham, we've gotten the rest of the Into the Spider Verse team in one form or another. Why the omission? <laughs> He's well, we not have, gonna believe this. <laughs> yeah, we have Spider Ham Rai, and then we also have a, a convention. Exclusive. They're they're old. They so are. I yeah, would like both an older, one, but yeah. 
Uh, and then Venture, he's been in both the original series and the Trapped in the Past, Our Present series. Mm. I don't know what that means, but if it's like Venture Bros, there is a Venture's sister, Risk Ooh. Venture's sister. So, uh, But yeah, the Dishonorable mentions when, any of the Egg when Wenders, gonna, Gwen, when God of Thunder, Risk, Hawk Gwen, sister. Punny Gwen, Happy Gwen, oh, Sleepy Gwen, and Doc Gwen. Oh, doing. yeah, like the, the yeah, dwarves. He's being cute. He's being yeah. a little cutie, cutie pie. I'm glad, uh, I'm glad Frank E. Rottweiler enjoys the Carnages instead of the Gwens. To be fair, the Gwens don't make sense. There's five that make up the band, and then there's Gwen 2099 oh. that's just like an outlier that doesn't even have like the shared trait. So Another generic hater. Yeah, there's quite a few generic haters. Super clicks are dumps the both hand ninjas and the police officer and pumps Spider Girl, Firestar, and Iron Fist. I understand Firestar. Yeah. That's an old timey. Why like, not also have Iceman then? Yeah. Why why just her? Why not bring yeah, in Iceman Miss, for bring the Bring back friends? Miss Lion instead of Spider Girl and Iron Fist. Um Yeah, like that man. I just hope the next time they make a cap set they do invaders and they bring back Iron Fist World War Two variant. That's so dumb. Because That's so stupid. <laughs> Marvel Strike Force was brave enough to make so the much. Iron Fist World War Two variant, and it's the most accurate invader of all time. Shut Obviously, up, if they're mouth, only going to make mouth. five, he should be one. You know, <sighs> the character that definitely was fighting for the invaders. In Cause me physical War pain. Two. Uh jeez. Pump. Aunt May, Mary Jane, J. Jonah Jameson, civilian on the basis. hater, yeah. civilian hater, dude. The amount of civilian and generic hate, I'll never get it. They'll be like, I want to play superhero to my yeah. superhero game. Come on, man, it's fun, it's flavorful. You're saying that Aunt May could dodge Superman's punch on a, a roll of a six? And yes, like, it's a game mechanic. Yeah. Get over it. Yeah, it's like the odds are completely in her favor if you roll a six. It's a one out of a six chance. Yeah, obviously Superman in like comic whatever accuracy would completely just obliterate eight yeah, obliterate he would love anime. to run up and just kill yeah, an old woman bloodlusted super superman punch. as he normally is obviously hates old women um but no like i i like civilians in like this game i really do i think it brings like a little level of like this character can't do anything except this little support power. And I really like that because, you know, like Big Tony, like Jay Jonah, like Mary Jane, like Aunt May here, um, any characters that do a little effect in a big way for a cheap amount of points, sure, they can't, <clears throat> they can't like actually fight somebody one on one, usually, but uh, yeah. it is cool that like, you know, they support like a Peter Parker so that he can go the distance kind of thing. But yeah, I'm going to say uh, to yeah, that one. Dude. Do you want to do our, our pumps and dumps? Um, to- totally cool, original, way better opinions than you, everybody here. Do you have your pumps and dumps? I actually did think of them. Yeah, so all the, so not a real pump and dump here, but all the hate on the chase theme made me think, what's a chase theme I would have actually like really liked getting? If they could have done the Spider Ham universe as a chase theme, it would have been really cool. This is slightly inspired by Marvel Snap, though. Uh, oh, if we could have gotten Marvel like, Snap. yeah, dude, uh, the Captain America mostly from like Marvel Snap, I obviously would have been cool with that. That also replaces a already weird version of Captain America. So let's say we replace the Gwens and the Carnages with this sub theme. What does that get us from the Spider Ham universe? So Captain America, we get Ant, Ant Man, and Mooster Fantastic. Those are just the ones off the top of my head that I know from Marvel Snap. We also get Goose Rider, the Goose version of Ghost Rider, which is hilarious, and I love it. There is some version of the Hulk. I think I don't remember what he is. Maybe he's like a pig or something. Uh, probably not a pig, but he's something weird. I know Galactus is a platypus, and he's Galactopus, and that's awesome and hilarious, and that would be great uh, for a dial. But there's a lot. So I would think Spider Ham, and then we just get another Spider Ham, right? So I think a Spider Ham universe chase theme would have been a better chase theme, and I think people would have really liked it over Carnages and Gwen's. So Galactopus, that's, and then he puts on like a hat. Perry, Perry the Galactopus. The Galactopus. <laughs> yeah. That would be awesome, dude. But uh, my, my normal pumps and dumps, they would be. Uh, so we're dumping 
these are all figures that I think were truly unnecessary for the set, and obviously better opinions than everybody else because of because they are Silver Sable. I okay. wouldn't have minded a new Silver Sable, but they made her worse than the Earth Hex Silver Sable. So like she was the same size as the Earth. Oh yeah, she's so tiny. Her she's like is so tiny, little tiny baby. It's hilarious. So like Silver Sable wasn't necessary. I'm gonna say mustard and ketchup daredevil because mm. we already got the perfect normal daredevil. We really didn't need mustard and ketchup daredevil. The rare one is like a the better so one, and better. then we also got two other Matt Murdocks. Yeah, so we didn't need four Matt Murdocks in a Spider Man set, and then Prowler. I we don't I don't think we need another Aaron Davis Prowler. You can complain about Aaron Davis Iron Spider. We definitely didn't need an Aaron Davis Prowler who was like okay. He's better than the old Aaron Davis Prowler, but. Like, we didn't need him. And this is all for pumping. Uh, let me get him up here. Hobby Brown Prowler. I love Hobby Brown as Prowler. Never read a single comic book with him in it, but I played a ton of Spider-Man Friend or Foe on the PlayStation 2. And he is... I was the younger brother, so he is the second player character in your first mission is Prowler. Right. And every version of Hero Clicks that Prowler has, that Hobby Brown Prowler has, is so underpowered to what I expect from, like, the video game. Like, he shoots his gas canisters, he does all this cool stuff, and, like, in Hero Clicks, it's like, Smoke Cloud is free or whatever to make two markers or something, and I'm like, that's not cool. So I always wanted, like, a way cooler version of Prowler. Next, 1602 Spider-Man. I really, really want a 1602 oh, Spider-Man. Yeah. 1602 is one of my all-time favorite storylines ever in Marvel. It's so amazing. It's so cool. If you haven't read it, it's pretty short, but it's such a great storyline. And Spider-Man even has like a few one-shot stories when he fully becomes like Spider-Man after the events of 1602. So I would love a 1602 Spider-Man in that universe. He has a really fun costume. He's got a Shakespearean little neck ruffle that looks really funny. So I would have really liked something like a 1602 Spider-Man. For my third one, I'm not entirely sure. This is when I started writing out Captain America and then realized that would just be way cooler for like an entire chase replacement theme. So this third one can be really anything anyone wants it to be. Uh, I don't care. Make it Chance, I guess. Yeah, sure. I guess I'll, I'll bandwagon. I'll say my third one's Chance. I figured. No, I want. I want a classic Paste Pot Pete. If I if I really had to choose, I want him to be called Paste Pot Pete. I want him to be silly and ridiculous. I don't want him to be the trapster. That's lame. Paste Pot Pete. Own who you are, Paste Pot Pete. You silly goofy man. But yeah, that would be my pump and dump for Spider Man. I do think a all Spider Ham universe chase theme would have been really really awesome hopefully we get goose rider in wheels of vengeance that's all Ooh, i'll say how yeah. tight would that be all these like goose serious rider. hardcore looking and then yeah. and then it's goose rider instead of easy rider with a tiger it's like easy rider with a hark <laughs> like <laughs> uh the canadian hero clicks players uh, would definitely right enjoy finally it. some canadian representation in yes hero clicks. there's definitely what? not enough <laughs> do you have a pump and dump simian for so man beyond amazing I actually like looking through the set list. I actually don't find a ton of faults in this set. No, list. you know what? As hard as I was on it, at for a Spider Man set, yeah, it's pretty good. There's like it's hard to be like, ooh, Black Cat, but like Black Cat belongs there. Like Spiderling, I guess like I could take or leave that specific one that they designed, but That's like fair. still kind of belongs there. Mm. Um, so ones that I would have pumped slash like, so I would have dumped this prime for a different prime so i would have dumped the kingpin prime okay i don't think kingpin needed that prime slot and i don't think the prime that we got made any sense like i know no i know i went on like a big long rant that one episode about how much i loved it and how comic accurate it was but <laughs> believe it or not i was being facetious and none of that was what? true i know no. uh, so instead i think the punisher like the hand punisher could have been a prime and like maybe whiz kids didn't know it at the time but he's imbued with like the god of war powers oh, at he? the Ooh. end of that run so like not only is he like that like the leader of the hand slash frank castle like evil punisher dude but he quite literally is like flying around shooting lasers out of his fist like that like whole deity kind of like power level and that would have made for a perfect prime at like you know in this yeah. set um so, yeah, I would have dumped the Kingpin Prime, made it the Punisher Prime. Okay. Um, same with the Green Goblin Prime. I don't think we needed, like... That was like, really bad yeah, Prime. Yeah. I don't think we needed Norman Osborn's face and Norman Osborn's mask when, like, essentially they're the same thing. Yeah. Sure, they had, like, some different flavor and stuff, but I think 
like it it would have been more interesting to me if we had a Doctor Octopus Prime where it was like Lady Octopus from like the Spider Verse, or it was that'd have been cool, like Zombie Octopus, or like I mean, just like something different yeah. for like that that super rare uh alternatively if we were keeping it in the super rares a carnage that was like the we never got a good set of the villains that went through the um what did they call it like the the axis event where like their personalities were flipped there was a version of carnage that was in like that event where his personality was flipped so he tried to help people but he was just like really bad at it because Mm. like my hands are knives like ah I'm super strong and my hands are knives. So I like I went to like help this kid's cat out of the tree and instead I apart. carved it in pieces. There's like, you know, that kind of thing. Um, I think that would have been like a fun prime to try and do was like for that carnage. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then also Venom Thanos. He's the only venomized or carnageized version of a character in the super rare slot. And he just seems so out of place. Like, we could have just replaced him with a regular Thanos and had the same kind of effects. Or, get this, we could have had a super rare Venom no. that was just like big ol' absorby, absorbo, drop like drops of Venom, um, do all kinds of crazy stuff Venom. And that could have just been that slot instead. An actual, like, strong, powerful representation of Venom? No, he has to be a common or an uncommon simian. Yeah. That's Venom. Instead of instead of healing from, like, super senses, if he had just, uh, I don't know, um, done more than that, like, <laughs> I don't know, been a threat to Peter Parker? Because this Venom Thanos is cool, but I'm like, it's at the end of the day, and we've had this conversation at least once on the podcast before, you slap the Infinity Gauntlet on a tank. You you slap the Infinity Gauntlet on like an ICBM. It doesn't matter where the gems are. The layers of power beyond that thing are just like so much more immeasurable that it doesn't even matter. So like I, I if I put the Infinity Gems on a broomstick, it would be just as powerful as the Infinity Gems on Mjolnir. And that's right. just a fact because they can literally change the universe. Whereas Mjolnir is like essentially a big magic hammer. A broomstick hammer, is a yeah. you know, it's just a broomstick. But like you know, in those in those infinite possibility kind of like constructs, adding a symbiote to somebody that can snap like half of existence out of the place does not doesn't really add. Does yeah, it? No, doesn't doesn't add enough to like be flavorful enough. Um, but yeah, those are, those are my pump and dumps. Okay. There's, there's a lot of good stuff in the set and I do like Venom Thanos. I haven't picked one up yet, but like at the same time, I am interested in one. I do like collecting Thanos is just not like in the level where I'm willing to like jump on every single one. I have the, uh, the wrong legacy Thanos, if you know (laughs) what I mean, um, so I, I do have at least that one. What He's a got sad a, universe you live in. What a beautiful sculpt he is uh, to have the wrong one of. But yeah, I I don't know. There's definitely stuff you can pump and dump from every set. I don't like taking away from chase themes. I like just reimagining the same themes slightly differently. So like that's why I went with two primes reimagined. There you go. And then that Thanos reimagined as just a good Venom. Because we got a good like super carnage sad that we didn't get a good super rare venom just sad all right let's go ahead and jump into listener questions there are dozens of us dozens yeah one listener question but he asked a few which is really cool so ben jones over on our discord has five questions for us they're all pretty cool i like them he's asking it all about shared traits if you know I think you're too about Dial H. You know, at the end of the year show, we always do a category for shared traits. So we like shared traits. I think it's a cool way of showing that they are a team without necessarily having a team ability. Or if they do have a team ability and they're a more specific version of that team, they have a shared trait. And I think that's really cool. So shared traits. Ben goes on to ask, what are the best shared traits in modern? Question mark. Or overall? Question mark. I think the best shared traits overall, whether or not these are truly good anymore, but I would say it is uh, zombie hunger and zombie infection. 
They're also some of my favorites, but oh, overall, the, yeah. The OG 2014 Deadpool Guardians of the Galaxy set zombies had the zombie hunger. You damage some or zombie infection. You damage somebody. You give them an infection token. Eventually, they had up to five. That was their max. When you killed them, they would then be added to your force, turned to their first KO click, and then healed up however many okay. infection tokens and then the hunger was the same way for zombies once they damaged somebody they got a hunger token when they would be ko'd you put them on their first ko click you'd heal them up all the hunger tokens you had and then you'd remove them and then they could just keep gaining hunger tokens after they were you know ko'd brought back to life ko'd brought back to life it felt like how the zombies worked in that universe they were insanely hard to actually kill and get rid of and they just kept spreading and spreading and spreading and i thought it was like one of the best ways to do the zombie virus and if they ever make more zombies I hope they stick with that because holy smoke it's awesome but th- those are in my opinion some of the best shared traits i agree that's much better than living legend and that uh living legend trait you cut me deep you cut me deep <laughs> i also of course like living legend no i would that's like living legend is just a lot more simple it is simple but also that's not how captain america is you kill captain america <laughs> yeah. or you kill falcon you, you would knock him out instead i you yeah. know i guess it is when they would be ko yeah. at least it is a, a little last push of effort which does fit captain america they are semi-fitting traits but most of the time, being KO'd means like, oh, you're gonna die, and then it's like, no, 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 I come back to life. I'm yeah. Captain America. It doesn't like it's not as thematic. We uh, like we as hero clicks players, we really should refrain from using uh, like KO resurrection. Yeah, yeah, like resurrection, resurrection stuff. kind of stuff should be as impossible as I mean, I guess like Hickman's X Men stuff, but like more so yeah. the uh, Earth X uh, Captain Marvel oh, him. kind of thing, sure. where it's like. Oh, that's a big deal that like these characters aren't dying. Um, yeah. Otherwise, like a stop click should be like, "Yep, he's about to die," and then he does, and that's that. Yep. Uh, but what do, you, what do you think? What's one of your favorite or best shared traits? Fall. Oh. Can't do favorite. That's a that's so. Player. Yeah, one of my favorite kind of like shared traits, just not in modern. Just like, well, this might still be modern. I don't. Is rebirth still modern? No, no, it's not. No, 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 no. Um. So it's the like the whole uh, Dark Knights traits. So like they had three, or well they had two, I guess. Um, so they had the we will not hide in the shadows anymore, which they all got uh, if they were in clear terrain and targeted by a range attack, they got a plus one to defense. If they were targeted by an opposing character, they could use stealth. They got a plus one defense. And when they were targeted by an opposing character occupying hindering terrain, they could plus one defense. So if it was Batman in the hindering targeting them and they were in clear terrain, they had a plus three defense, which was wild. Like, didn't usually yeah. make a difference because they were overcosted. But that trait on itself, if they weren't overcosted, wild like what a trait to like have and honestly like that trait whenever somebody plays one them like calculating okay i'm in clear terrain that's a Mm -hmm. plus one uh can you use stealth oh you do have traded stealth okay that's a plus two uh and you're like not shooting through hindering but you are standing in hindering so that's a plus three like seeing people like calculate that in real time it's like wild to be like oh man I forgot Ooh. how hard it is to hit these guys. Yeah, it's fun. Uh, but then, like, also the reckless disregard for life. I think we Those saw cool. that come back in other ways. But, yeah, like, being able to hit somebody and then deal one pen to, like, everybody adjacent was really cool. Um, that was, like, it wasn't the first sub-theme or chase theme that I saw, like, do a big thing like that. Because, obviously, uh, Batman Team-Up also had, like, a shared chase theme that, like, had all the same traits and stuff like that. But even before that, there was, like, other ones. This was just, like, the first one where all of these chases seemed like they were meant to be played at, like, full or half points, like, against your opponent. They weren't, like, sideline. They weren't um, support pieces. They were all attackers. And so it was, like, what is the, like, the, clearly there's got to be a good combo here. And, like, I feel like a lot of people when the set dropped thought for sure, like, there was a good combo here. I know... Smarter Among Us thought like Murder Machine was it, but they they were wrong because they, they were so the, wrong. They were not. Yeah, they were <laughs> completely wrong. But um, <laughs> like uh, Barbados, 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 uh, whatever his name is, the big bat god. That was my favorite, and he had like additional special powers and traits that affected the other Dark Knights. So he like let them become like 
Batman ally and Batman enemy that is team good. ability kind of stuff. But more so than that, like, you know, being able to, like, free action move and stuff like that. Like, he was just kind of crazy. And that was always my, like, shoe in. I was like, clearly he's got, like, a way where he would be good. And I think even to this day... If he like, if they were just like a little bit cheaper at the time, yeah, they would. Like, they did seem way overcosted, man. Everything else that was kind of overcosted. Like Red Death had a his lower line was a hundred points. Anyways, so shared traits. Uh, <laughs> Don Breaker was seventy five. Why did Don Breaker never get good in a in a land when he was like four clicks long, man? Yeah, at, at seventy five, so he was low, only four clicks long. So but low in a land when. Jason Wingard was like the go-to meta. How is, did Dawnbreaker never? Well, because he was the same points yeah. and only a counter to Jason. In which case, why not just play Jason, who does way more? I guess. You know what I mean? Because yeah, Dawnbreaker doesn't like give you control of what you know. Yeah, I wanted Dawnbreaker to be good so bad. He could have been. He just wasn't. I mean, he's still uh, silver legal. That's true. Yeah. Uh, next one. What are the worst shared traits in modern? Question mark. And then overall, I think overall some of the worst ones are the like Injustice League and Justice League Unlimited ones, oh. where it's just on a six, give on a, a token six, or take a token, a token off. Yeah. Really bad leadership and whatever. Like just, yeah. I think those are really bad. I also just think it's like in in hindsight, it's bad design because and like playing a full Justice League team and then rolling. For each character, it's not like they each have leadership. It's like you have to roll a six. What just a and you wordy have to, way to roll yeah. it to, to word it's it. So you know, wordy, it's so wordy, and then you you have to extra. roll like seven what? times to see if you get a six to see if you can remove an action token from one of your characters. To be fair, like the few times I've ran that team, I definitely like hit it a few times. There's a few times where you hit a six, and like you're like, wow, that actually is like kind of cool, but. More so, it's just a huge waste of time. It is, dude. Because nope, nope, didn't make it. Nope, didn't make it. Nope, you're, didn't make it. Yeah, you're nope, just rolling, rolling, rolling. And then I would say one of the worst traits in modern. This is actually just my least favorite. It's a uh, plus five points sword bearer. It's oh. so much evil. It can be cheated on via yeah. that trait. So I'm not not big on it. Yeah, not I'll, huge. I'll toss in like whatever Genesis and Apocalypse is. Uh, Bear keyword cheating, like specifically, yeah, those specific like keyword shared. cheating. They were good enough where if you just made an X Men team, if you just let them like do X Men Araco, X Men team, yeah, if you just let them do X Men become Araco and Araco become X Men and yada yada, you didn't need to do all the other keywords in there. That was that was a little bit much. Um, worst shared traits. I'm gonna go with the Captain Sidekick stuff. Oh, because sad, like obviously sad, it true. seems like it's dead because we haven't seen it since Empire. Empire, yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. haven't seen it in a, a quite a while, it seems. And yeah. uh, man, has it not like it just has not like really shown through. Like there's there's never been that combo where it was like, oh, I can't wait to run ten of these sidekicks, two of these captains. Like give them leadership and like blades on like a blades always yeah. ends up like five and like I've got all these uh, Bentleys that have exploit so like my my five blades will be exploit like no none of it happened none of it ever worked it just felt like it was failed from the beginning like they just uh, shot themselves in the foot didn't quite go the distance and maybe that's for the best because honestly it could have been like. All sidekicks can use hypersonic precision that strike. That would have been dumb. And that, that just nutty. would have been wild. And then like the allies would have been like, oh, yeah, you get a plus one against everyone if you have this keyword. Like it, Instead of like the allies saying, like you get a plus one against this keyword, if it was like, if you have this keyword, you get a plus one. I mean, they could have really made it stupid, but I'm glad they didn't. But it still ends up being one of the worst ones. And to tag along with that, I'll say the... Um, Frightful four swap. <laughs> oh, oh like yeah. The, the frightful four is still except really for, bad. Except for Rector, baby. Yeah. And I'm on a scientist there's, team, which doesn't matter. There's so one much very anymore. specific like reason why it works, and frightful four traits were just like, man, you made shared traits for four figures. I mean, technically not just four. They could have been played in like a different amount, but um, gosh, bad. It just turned out bad. That's. Yeah, super, super, super fair. 
All right, next up is what are your favorite shared traits and why? I have a couple. These are these are some of my absolute uh, favorite ones right here. So first off, I'm going to go with the from the Deadpool set back in 2014 is the Merc with the Mouth shared trait, which let oh, them yeah. do the word balloon The stuff. word balloon stuff, yeah. I really enjoyed that. I loved playing a Deadpool core theme team and having all the different word balloons and stuff. And I remember it was so fun trying to collect all the word balloons and finally getting I have Thor, a bag Deadpool. of word balloons over Ooh, oh, on the baby. other side of the room. Ooh, yeah. I got rid of a lot of my word balloons recently, so actually I oh, might steal some of your word balloons. I mean, uh, you want my sheep gun? Hmm? That was, well, that was the worst one. Oh, was it? <laughs> it, was, it was real bad. It was real bad. Uh, and then I loved the valley, the showdown shared trait that oh, all of yeah. the Wild West Valley people had. But my favorite shared trait of all time, and many of you probably don't even remember this one at all, is the Avengers Assemble trait from the Age of Ultron movie set, which here's a bit of history for you. Every time one of like the main Avengers hit with an attack... You would then your your opponent would choose, I believe, right? Yeah, the opposing player chooses. You either got one effect or the other effect. But uh, there was also a Nick Fury in this like exact same set that would just say both effects happen, which was insane, right? So when an opponent makes a choice on Avengers Assemble, okay, if you roll a D six and a five or six, you change the effect. Okay, so it wasn't crazy, but so like we'll take Hulk for example because he's the most popular. Is this common Hulk where he's zero zero eight? So, like, when he would hit by an attack, right, this is his Avengers Assemble trait, you choose one. You had to deal the target one unavoidable damage and, and give it an action token, or you put an anger token on Hulk's card. And these anger tokens let him, like, heal for free or modify his stats in the same amount. So, nine times out of ten, you were always just like, ah, fine, give him an anger token, because you didn't want to take an unavoidable damage and get an action token, because that was insane, right? So you're like, ah, oh, whatever, you just, just give Hulk an anger token. But then the anger tokens were also kind of insane. So the Avengers Assemble trait, where just it gave your opponent a choice between like a rock and a hard place, was a ton of fun. And so I, I really, really liked this shared trait a ton. And now I'm looking at this Hulk, and I'm just like, man, how did this Hulk exist? He's insane. He was so <laughs> awesome. He was just so sick. Yeah, I but feel those like are some of my favorite like shared traits of all time. Every generation has had a Hulk where it was just like too good to be. Too. Yeah, dude. Like Age of Ultron. I mean, right um, now we have a stupid good Hulk, yeah. which is great. I love it. Like Game of Clap, like yeah, um, the, Mighty Thor. What's the undead? Little, oh little yeah, fifty the, point Quake Hulk. The was quake, still like nuts. leap climb Quake Hulk for fifty points. Um, what was the one before that? The the undead one from Avengers. Captain oh, America. Immortal Hulk. Well, that's at, way after that one. Was that Captain yeah, America? Yeah, Hulk? Captain yeah. America had the Immortal Hulk. Yeah, the Immortal Hulk. Hulk like, just gets good dials, man. Yeah. Stupid good dials. He really does. I mean, it makes sense, too. Where, what are some of your favorite shared traits? I mean, um, so some of my favorite ones, I really like the new wall crawler one. I that's think, really fair, actually. I think, like, it if, is really good. If they're considering like making a change to leap climb, I think like that, not necessarily like free four, within four, but like a free... Like within one, even yeah. Like if I'm on like a different elevation and I free place like to a lower elevation or a higher elevation, I think that's like it's not quite as good as sidestep, but it still like makes leap climb good. And I I think wall crawler is like the next step towards like the change for leap climb because it is such a good power. It gives leap climb and then free places character in a square of different elevation within four squares and line of fire like man that's just so mobile and like some of like the characters that have it obviously the prime um symbiote spider-man prime is like the most because he's got like sidestep he's got the wall crawler and then he's got like some crazy charge stuff too yeah so like he can get like almost all the way across the map just on his own um another one i really like so i think wall crawler is cool i think they should make that into the some sort of bigger thing. One that I really liked was the Future Foundation. I think one of the biggest redeeming qualities okay. that set had was the chase theme, if maybe only the redeeming quality that cha that <laughs> set had. But uh, no, the mini face is a doom trait. I think that like like you know for better or worse, I think that trait that shared trait against the like across the chases had one of the most lasting impacts on the meta. Yeah. While like while I mean it's still technically modern right now, but uh, I think it has one of the most lasting impacts on the meta for a single chase theme outside of like sideline I pay zero points kind of thing. Um, 
technically it is sideline i pay zero points i mean it, it is yeah. yeah but uh outside of like troublers and troublemakers where like you include them for no cost like ha- playing a doom for 75 points at the least and then having all these options was really cool and i really hope they do that like more in the future where you can just play a character at 75 points like a decent amount like 75 points isn't nothing that's one sixth of your build so you have to make that commitment and then maybe you like swap it into like you know like a uh, spider hammer eye or like spider uh not spider hammer eye but like spider ham or like spider-man 2099 if they do like the next set of spider-verse kind of stuff and then uh lastly from AI, I really liked the Space Gem chooses wow. its bear, like the chooses its bearer wow. stuff. Yeah, so like I'm looking specifically at Pip the Troll, but Pip had the Space Gem chooses its bearer. But you liked any of the gem bearers. Yeah, you don't so, mean just Space Gem. No, not yes. the Space Gem was probably one of the worst. Yeah, but um, no, prior to actually having gems as equipments. You could play like Gamora and Drax and Pip oh, yeah. and I think Moon Dragon. Those were cool. Uh, those were really cool traits. I did like Maxim, those. Adam oh, yeah. Warlock. I forgot about Maxim. Yeah, Maxim. I don't think actually had one of those traits. He benefited if like <laughs> he you got, gave him one of yeah, those. Yeah, he got it. But yeah, like so you could give people like those powers and that was cool. Just like I like yeah, cause especially in sealed. Like you'd play Gamora because she was like an uncommon with like a good power set and uh she'd die and you'd be like i'm gonna give uh i don't uh, know her oh yeah, which was her. also a character that said i'll give her the alpha flight character her will get prob and you're just like all right mm, okay and like that it ended right there but like i just really liked the like tag you're it you get this power i thought that was stupid but funny i just can't um, believe you didn't mention halloween spectacular oh yeah I mean, really, that's just shape change. It, it day, really though. is. Yeah, at the end of the day, it's nothing crazy. Yeah, it really doesn't even make sense. I think mean, they're all in different costumes, but like, it is. It was a clever, it was really neat. F- I guess it wasn't just shape change. It was shape change, and they the healed, healed. Yeah, if they hit Ooh. shape change, so yeah, Ooh. very spooky. Um, no, I do really like the spooktacular trait because, um, gosh, I got a lot of mileage out of that. Yeah. <laughs> Next up, what shared trait would you make? Who is it for, and what would it do? Oh. So mine's mine's very easy because I want this sub theme to happen before hero, like before I die, please, uh, hero clicks. Captain America Corps. That's the my number one want for the past ten years in hero clicks is in the Captain America Corps. It's a strict like five characters, five star points, ayo, and they would have a trait. It's probably would just be like willpower. And if they succeed, heal a friendly character or something. Or leadership if they succeed. Because that's a very Captain America slash patriotic S powers are like leadership and willpower. So it would literally just be like leadership, willpower if they succeed, heal themselves or an adjacent friendly character like one click. And maybe it would give them both. I don't know. Um, it could be as literally as simple as that, or it could be something that's like even better that would also fit. It could give them M power or something, or you know, when somebody hits, you know, remove an action token from them if they're adjacent to you. M power, and if an adjacent character like hits, remove an action token. I don't know, but like something cool, like just Captain America core should be a share trait if it ever exists. Should also be a keyword. I would love it. Um, but yeah, that's roughly what it would do. What do you think, Simeon? What would I, what's a share trait you would make? What I for, would it do? I forgot about the share trait that I love, but upon this question, I remembered it. And it's the Speed Force tokens. Those were awesome. Um, I think those going to be a, applied to a lot of characters. So, like, I would apply it to um, like Berserker Rage. So, like, okay, if I have a Wolverine that has Battle Fury and like hits, maybe it doesn't have to have like so many qualifiers, but like a Wolverine that like hits, he gets a like a Berserker Rage. When he gets hit, he gets a Berserker Rage. Mm. Uh, when a friendly character within line of fire gets hit, he gets, like, a Berserker Rage. And then you give him <laughs> stuff like you can move him. Like, you can replace, like, the like the friendly character that got hit with him instead. Mm. Um, you can, like, do, like, effects like that. You if can do stuff waited. like 
Berserker Rage. He yeah, gets yeah, it gets targeted rage. with the outwit. He gets probability controlled. Your, berserker your Rage. Your opponent blinks a Berserker, berserker Rage, rage. rage. Yeah, like... Your opponent breathes Berserker Rage. <laughs> your opponent Ascension. does that thing where they kind of <laughs> clack, clack, clack all their action tokens. Yeah. Berserker Rage. Yeah, when they like reshuffle their action <laughs> tokens like a half a dozen oh times in gosh. between turns. When they um, switch their dice out like, halfway through the game, Berserker Rage. Ha- hang on, this isn't poker. You don't need to, you don't need to like spirit shuffle your your tokens i'm so guilty of that it's though the same I do it all amount the time. of to- i try to do it i've never quite learned how to actually do it with my oh, really? fingers but i i definitely try to because it's really fun and simeon cool. doesn't know how to do that thing berserker rage <laughs> yeah i spin the pen that's something spin i learned glizzy. in debate class so yeah it's spin the pen did berserker rage um that is no, a cool like, trait though i like it. A, a trait where like yeah you get like berserker tokens and then like you either cash them in for Obviously, like, this would be in place of, like, no regen on dial, no uh, free, like, heal kind of stuff. So, like, you cash these in for, like, regening, but then, like, also cash them in for, like, plus one stats or for, like, different effects. Like, they don't have flurry on dial because they're, like, like, Wolverine is such a simple character. It's, like, blades, charge, flurry. It's, like, regen literally the epitome the of, like, a Wolverine. It's, yeah. like, blades, charge, flurry, then, yeah, like, some sort of Wolverine, like, Wolverine regen, uh, toughness maybe, like maybe like an invuln click, stuff like that, like stop clicks. That super rare from XXS is such like a good example where it's he's a charge piece, he's got sidestep, he can get flurry, um, I think he's got like combat reflexes, and then he's got like three stop clicks, and it's just like, how do you ever do better than this? And it's like, well, these like like tokens, I guess. Yeah. Like, maybe, like, this character, like, uh, the Uncanny X-Men Uncommon was able to, like, gather tokens for how he was damaged. Oh, yeah, that's right, that's right. Yeah. yeah. He was and I cool. think if, like, they just, like, expand he that, like, good. rage tokens. And, like, if they just made a mechanic that was rage tokens, that actually applies to a lot of characters because Hulk also gets rage tokens. Like, Wolverine gets rage tokens. Like, there's a lot of characters that get stronger as they get mad. Like, strong guy gets stronger as he gets hit whoa so it's not really a rage token but it's like a but as he gets s- hit strong guy to- yeah. <laughs> i mean it might as well be a rage token yeah. but like also just like there's a lot of characters uh out there that like even in like the dc side that get uh stronger as they like, get like punched and stuff and, that's like, one of my favorite or maybe a... like lose like as many inhibitions yeah. as they have i guess sure yeah <laughs> superman's there's... like oh i guess i won't hold back as much and i'll Right, vivisect your brain. There you go. Because I'm All Star Superman. And this brain gracious. surgery is now like on the. T- I won't kill a man, but I'll do Lobot- brain surgery without on the table. his. Yeah, I'll do brain surgery without his consent. Yeah, I don't know. What a what a great Superman that was. He yeah. was like, I looked into your brain and saw an anomaly, and I cut it out. Oh, we got. Thanks. Yeah. I don't care for that, though. Yeah. Uh, number five, what is the Dial H shared trait? Ooh. What does it do? What don't it do? How do we not have, like, empower or enhancement, but plus two damage instead yeah. of one? Like, I, I think if we're anything, it's supporting the community. Yeah. I really hope so. I would hope it's something like that. I would it's, hope we have It's either. pretty much every uh, damage power. We have shape change. Dial H and find out. We absolutely maybe, maybe we have shape incorporate change. like the dial H where it's like free roll a d six dial yeah. H four and then it just dot 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 yeah. and then it's roll a d six and it it gives you like empower support outwit perplex yeah. prob enhancement or something like what literally what damage power would we not be capable of uh battle fury nah we capable of battle fury bro we've never been mad no not once. I guess that's the one. Yeah, that's the yeah, only one. Like, hundred percent. We've never outwitted so many people. We've perplexed <laughs> so many people. We've enhanced and empowered so, so many true, people. Bro. So true. And I mean, we sh- we shape change. I mean, look at look at our uh, YouTube wig budget, through twenty twenty. Our budget's insane. Our costume budget's wild. And <laughs> in, in twenty twenty, we shape changed so many times for Thursday throwdowns. Yikes! We really did. Gosh. Is there is there a damage power range combat expert? I guess maybe we don't get the experts. That's that's literally. I mean, the only range combat expert we could say we have is like the unboxing of the um, oh f- future future uh, uh, cosmic clash cosmic cosmic clash. clash. Yeah. yeah, I was a bit of an expert. That's that's as close as we came. Yeah, was yeah like the the skeet shooting of the cosmic yeah, clash. That was I love that. that was and classic. then uh, close combat expert. I mean, 
how many times we've got to hit each other with chairs that's what you guys are like you're so right that's that's pretty close combat expert i mean if i'm in a fight and it's close combat I don't want to get hit with the chair. It's like Trust number me, one. I've been hit by the chair shot by Simeon. You don't want to get hit by <laughs> Simeon with the chair. It hurts. Yeah. That was a sore day. That was a sore morning. Oh, that was rough. I can't wait to do it here in a few weeks. Uh, oh, gosh. Yeah, that is coming shall up. We, shall we announce? So now that it's the end of the I uh, guess, yeah, question, yeah. Shall we announce that the Dial H for Hero Clicks official International Player Foundation live stream, this huge live stream to raise as much money as possible to get international players to Hero Clicks in Memphis, Tennessee, at Worlds, will be April 29th. Is that right? I believe it's April 29th, and we're going to start yep. around 5 or 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. Central Standard Time with the goal, and this is going to be really fun, you guys, at we're probably going to do the live stream for like a guaranteed five to six-ish hours. Yep. But if donation goals are met, we will keep going another hour if, up to if 24 the, uh, hours. If the stream is strong enough and the questions and like the the chat is strong enough. So like if we get to a point where nobody's donating and we've been up for way too long and like nothing's happening except like random conversation, we might end it. But yep. uh, if you looked at our 400th episode... You know, you know we go the distance. We really do. Uh, you know we we go for pain. Uh, <laughs> we've got a lot of stuff in store. We'll have a lot of tears, and then of course um, a lot of tears. Yeah, T E A R's. Um, <laughs> also the T I E R. Yeah, T I E R S. Yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, but also like, uh, if you guys want to ask like anything, just pop into the chat and like you know ask questions of us. Or if you want to donate and be like, hey, I'll donate X, Y, Z if you guys do uh, ZRQ or whatever. Um, those are like things that are optional. We'll have a full list posted at some point before the live stream. All the things that we're geared to do. And then, I don't know, are we going to open a Discord specifically for the live stream this time? We certainly might. But also, since we can see the donations easier, there's not necessarily a reason to have a Discord for yeah, the live stream. There's not really a reason. Like the last to... one was so that we could see your donation because that was going to someone where we couldn't see it. Like that was yeah. just like American Cat Society or the uh, the needs. Uh, I think charity the, and everything. the main reason this time would be specifically for if you wanted to like join for international the, players uh, call. or the call. Oh yeah, that if, would be if, important. If we, we do like that. a yeah, if we do like last time where we let you join You're and right. we do like a quick like bad Sam that kind of thing. Obviously Ian will also be participating. Um so he'll be here as well. But yeah, if you want to join the call, um easiest way is to find us on Discord. You don't have to join our Dial H for HeroClix Discord, but like could definitely at least know who we are or like be able to message us on right. discord because that's how we do those uh additional calls right. into the uh live stream and the stuff. old live stream because yeah otherwise it's it's basically impossible if we don't do it another way uh we don't just like have people call us on facebook i think i i was looking back at the 400th episode i think i did like answer a call from chance on my phone i believe that and like hold it up to the microphone did you hear him at all it i mean it was like seven hours in so who knows who heard what yeah that's at that really point. fair man we were toast by that point yeah it was time. very toasty but yeah guys make sure to check that out but you don't have to wait until we obviously get into the live stream to donate to the ipf you can donate now and that would be seriously huge guys like 1,000%. Massively, massively huge. So please donate to the normal IPF. We'll have a link in the description below. Help get international players to Worlds. If you haven't seen the Edison Lee video that is on the IPF Facebook page, seriously, go check it out. It is so freaking like, yeah, I was like, whoa, as soon as I saw that, I was like, I want to pay for this. If I could, I would pay for this dude's flight all by myself. Get this guy here. Pay for everything because this dude's awesome. You know, that's how I feel about anyone that's international trying to make it to America to Worlds. Let's he, truly make yeah. Worlds Worlds and donate to the IPF. He Literally just don't such a, a good job of just like explaining and s explaining in like two minutes exactly yeah. what we are trying to do and that is bring people like him and into worlds like because he encapsulated the dream yeah. right in that two minutes it was amazing yeah and that, that two minutes he perfectly explained who he is why he deserves to come to worlds and like why you guys should like invest in like these people coming to worlds because he single-handedly Hosts like all the events in Singapore yeah, and did nationals, awesome. and then he also like won events in Singapore, and he's also just like you know holding up like 
you know, this country that doesn't get stuff on time. Mm-hmm. And, like, it's not like the U.S. They don't just get stuff, like, on, you know, we complain sometimes when stuff comes, like, a month late or so. They We're don't, so privileged. They don't get stuff until, like, two months late sometimes. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's it's wild how, like, he gets this community to, like, be completely enraptured in this game. And all he wants to do is come to Worlds and experience uh, the biggest, best Hero Clicks venue of all time, which is Memphis, which yeah. is Worlds. I mean, um, really, a, a goal way in the future, way down the line, is getting every national champion to Worlds. Absolutely. For, like, that would be so incredible. You and I think I mean? that's just, like, deservedly so. Like, if it's, you, They should just be able to get to Worlds. But if it's you like, can, like, Hero host Clicks your nationals, big and enough. it's, yeah, if you if you can host your nationals and you win it, I mean, man, that's better than states, and anyone that wins a states can make it. Exactly. Well, I mean, like, anyone that loses states can make it. It's just, <laughs> yeah. It's really easy. Like, I know from experience, I lost plenty of states, and I still made it in 2018, 2019, uh, 2022. Um, I've made it a lot of years, three, exactly. None before that, but <laughs> I can count them on one hand. Uh, but, yeah, like... Hero Clicks Worlds is a lot easier for us, and it's not as easy for the international yeah. community. It's just super cool that these players put so much effort. And, I mean, Edison, again, to his credit, speaks basically perfect English. Oh, like, yeah. Better than some of you. Uh, oh! <laughs> oh! But, like... Not to he not went to there. not to disparage some of our uh, southern <sighs> listeners, but like man, wow, the man specified. is specified. The man is eloquent. <laughs> he is he is well spoken, uh, more so than me at some points, especially like at the end of this podcast. But uh, gracious. no, like he he definitely just like invibes everything I want the clicks community to be, and. It's sad that like he doesn't like live here. Like if it I does. could just, it stinks. If if it was the age of Star Trek, and I could just you know beam him up, Scotty, and make him be here, and I was just like, ah, sorry, you're an American citizen now. Like, yep. can't beam you back. Like you're just stuck here. And <laughs> oh, he was no. like, ah, oh, this sucks. And I was like, yeah, it does. But like, here's can... my venue. Come play. And then he was just forced to stay. Oh my goodness. That would be the perfect dream. Gosh. And I would do that to every single one of the IPF people that uh send in their videos that would be really awesome yeah so hey and if you're an international player that wants to try to get in on the ipf and getting to america please send it send us a video explaining why you want to come to america for worlds explaining why you know what your hero whose journey has been like why this would be awesome so seriously let's know but yeah guys donate to the ipf even five bucks one dollar anything you can donate with paypal paypal money isn't even like real money so like just paypal is a bunch of money please Seriously, yeah. just do it. Donate to the IPF. It would be awesome. But we're going a little long on the podcast, so I think it's about time. We we wrap it up, get things going. At this time, all I do is remember is how, t- how funny that escape room was that had, like, the sad <laughs> shoots and ladders as its only, like, reference to board games. That's all I could think about. They're like, oh, one of you's the thimble. Yeah, that there was someone who was the thimble, right? Oh. They were, yeah, it was, like, thimble, race car. A top hat. Top, no. No. no one was the top hat. No one was like oh. a cool piece, you know. Race car being like the oh, coolest yeah. piece. The race car is obviously the Someone was the iron, piece. which I thought was like a night shield for the longest time because it was like the triangle shield. The but iron and the race car were my two go to. I liked things. the iron a yeah. lot because I didn't know it was an iron yet. Yeah. I just thought it was a night shield. To be fair, even like. Not it- a single person was the battleship or the cowboy on the horse. Wow. And I was like, are you kidding oh, me? I forgot about the cowboy. Right? The cowboy goes wow. hard. That's a great piece. That is a good skull. So who's the thimble over the cowboy? I mean, oh, I could put the thimble. I on feel my like pinky. the thimble's just like always like one of the last pieces to get lost. Past, so it's like, ah, uh, yeah. Well, this is one of the pieces Pretty we still have piece. left. The battleship gets lost <laughs> so easy, dude. That yeah. battleship's so thin. Yeah. Oh, the the Scotty. It's the little dog, the little Scotty. Dog. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't remember what year he got incorporated, but brought on the Monopoly team. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. They were like. And eh, Thimble's lost uh, a lot of viewers, so it's Scotty time. Bring in the little dog. Well, if you want to bring in the little dog, you want to bring in some board games, you know what? Go to CoolStuffInc.com where they got the coolest in Heroclix 
They've got the latest Heroclix singles and sealed products. So check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Make sure to use code DIAL5 when you do so to get 5% off. And uh, you get free shipping on anything over $100 or more. So check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Happy trails. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks now. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like 100 least of dead pain and humor. Over oh, okay, six yeah. people Over think I am funny. I'm your Captain America. That was just you in a costume. You absolute fools. So they're going to be able to edit that out for sure. That's cool because it's expensive. I'm going to make hero clicks like that forever. Are you kidding? <laughs> 